I will show you how to do speed estimation of any object from your video using YOLO 11 object detection and by track object tracking. By the end of this video, you will see how to implement a vehicle speed detection program in Python. If you're new here, make sure to check out the links in the video description and subscribe for more robotics and AI. So speed is defined as distance over time. So let's say you have an object starting at point A and then it goes to point B. If you know the distance between point A and point B, assuming it moved in a straight line, and you know how long it took, then you could theoretically find the distance by taking distance and dividing it by time. So to see this in action, we're going to go ahead and download our video of our cars going down the freeway. I'm going to use supervision here, import supervision as SV and use the download assets function to get my video. So right here, this is going to be the clip that we will be using to do our speed estimation. And notice we're using cars here, but you could extend this concept that I'm going to teach you to any object. So we're going to focus on the distance part of the speed equation first. So if you look here, we're trying to find the segment distance, which is the distance between these two red lines. So I chose a section of this picture such that we have two white dashes and two blank spaces between the dashes as my segment. So the idea is I'm going to go ahead and find the distance of a car. So the average car length of a sedan is going to be 4.5 meters per car. So I roughly estimated this to be 4.75 cars. And if each car is 4.5 meters per car, then we're going to get an average of 23.375 meters. So this is going to be a pretty rough estimate. If you happen to have a better way to find a better estimate or you know the exact distance, then your measurement will be much more accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and run my determine line location function that I created. And inside of here, I'm going to be using the supervision library to read my video. You can see here inside my function, I'm using the sv.getFrames generator. So this will get the frame of my clip. And if I do next, it'll get the next frame that it's going to be reading. So using matplotlib, I go ahead and plot it. And I could read my cursor location by placing my cursor at my desired two lines. So you can see here, when I put my cursor here, I'm going to get a starting location, which I call Y start of 1,318 pixel. And then for the Y end, it's going to be 1,675. I also want to only focus on the left side of this image for this demo. So the X end value for the pixel is going to be 1,732. So here you can see that I'm going to create another function called view crossing lines. So this will actually generate the two red lines for me when the video is playing back. So here, this is my logic here. I have two main functions here that I'm using. So inside my for loop of the for frame and frame generator, I'm going to be calling the draw horizontal line two times using my start and end position. So you can see right here, these are my red lines drawn as the video is playing back, which will help me visualize when the car passes that section. So now that we figured out distance, we're going to be focusing on how to figure out time to calculate our speed. So the idea is when the object center passes the first red line, we're going to mark this T start for our starting time. When the object passes the second line, this will be our T end or the end time. So now we might be asking, how do we know when the object passes the red line? To answer this question, we need to know the X and Y coordinate of the object. So to figure this out, we need to run YOLO. So you take the image of the object, which is each frame that our video is processing, you feed it into YOLO, and then you're going to get the object location. Now, if you have a custom data set you're working with, I have a video on how to train your custom data set. So go ahead and check out this video in my channel. OK, so now we're ready to call our object detection function. So here you can see that I'm using supervision. I'm going to be using this for some of my visualization. And then I'm using Ultralytics for YOLO. So you can see in this documentation page, you can read up on how to detect and annotate your objects that you're detecting. So here you can see this is my function here. I'm calling YOLO, uh, YOLO 11N specifically, and I'm storing into model. I'm going to be calling the frame generator here so I could process all my video frames. And then here you can see I'm using the sv.box annotator. This is what's going to help me annotate my images. 
So inside this for loop for each frame, what I'm going to do is get the results of my model. And then I'm going to get the detections by using sv.detections from Ultralytics. And then this is this part here, the annotated frame, is what's going to be annotating my frame and modifying each frame. So once I do that, it's going to plot it and let's see it in action. All right, so you can see these are my objects being detected. You can see the color boxes that's drawing around it. Those are the bounding box. But notice that here is playing a little bit slow, so it's going to be very dependent on the GPU you're using. This is running on a 1615 Ti, so it's pretty weak. So if you have a better GPU, you'll probably have better performance. So up to this point, you should be wondering, if you have a car that passes the first line and then a car that passes the second line, how do you know the car that passed is the same car? So this is where tracking comes in. With ByTrack, we can actually assign the object with an ID, then we can confirm that the object that passed the first line and the second line is in fact the same car because they'll have the same ID. So now we can go ahead and run our object tracking function. So you can see inside of here, what we're doing is we're adding this additional part. ByTrack equals SV ByTrack, and we pass in some frame rate. You could get this using the video info.fps, and then we have a track activation threshold, which I set to be 0.3. You could play around with this value to see what works for you. But after that, you can see that we have this new line here that says detection equals ByTrack.update with detections. So this will actually track our objects from our detections. Another thing that I've added is this part here, the trace annotator. This is what will show the trace of the object so we know that is the path that is traveling. All right, let's see it in action. You can see the squiggly lines here. That means it's being tracked. And you can see there's an ID associated with it. Later on, I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger because you can see right now the default setting is kind of small and hard to see. So all the work we've done has finally led us up to the final point where we could calculate the speed of our object. So back then we said that time equals t end minus t start, right? But the thing is, in practice, we actually can't measure the time directly. So what we want to do instead is we have a y start, and when we have the object past the y start, we actually want to figure out the frame count at y start. We want to do the same thing when the object passes y end. This is going to be the frame count at y end. So to get the frames elapse or the total number of frames that pass between the first line and the second line, we're going to subtract the two frame counts. And then now we could get the time by taking the frames elapsed divided by frames per second. So finally, we could calculate our speed by taking our distance dividing by time, and we could convert our units from meters per second to kilometers per hour using this 3.6 conversion factor. So what we're going to do is go ahead and call our speed estimation function where we pass in our y star, y end, x end, the segment distance, and our frames per second, which we found to be 25 frames per second. So here you can see what we're doing is we're going to collect all of our data inside this dictionary here. So the mapping that we're going to have is here. This is going to be the track ID that we find from byte track. And we're going to have some fields in here. Okay, We're going to have a y start, which is the frame count at y start. We're going to have a y end. And then based on that, we could calculate the speed and store it so we could later on show it in our video. So notice here that this is our function. So what we have here is we're going to have a function called check vehicle crossing, which we pass in the frame count, detections, y star, y end, x end, segment distance, and frames per second. And then here, this is the labels, how we're setting up the labels when we're actually plotting it and annotating it. So you can see here inside our check vehicle crossing, the main logic that we do here is we want to check if the vehicle crosses the Y start. So we compare the distance if Y center is greater than or equal to Y start. We're going to go ahead and store that value. We do the same thing for Y end. If it's greater than Y end, we're going to go ahead and store that value as well. So depending on if your line direction is in the X or Y direction, you may have to tweak some of this to make it work for your application. All right, you can see our program in action now. So you can see when the car passes the first line, nothing will happen. When it passes the second line, it'll start showing the speed. So I'm using a small section here because I want to take an average of a small distance to get the most accurate velocity for that period of distance. So if you want the code for this video, check out the links down below. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.